Hello everybody, and this is the first reading of my free weekly readings that I'm giving as my new name for my business called The Blue Sky Shop. Um, <clears throat> I want to spend just a couple of minutes um, here at the intro just to say um, kind of what came over me as I made that transition. I actually took a day off from work last week in order to build a new website which you can find at bluesky-shop, S-H-O-P-P-E dot com. And I have been really moved over the past number of months uh, to transition away from doing animal work with horses in particular. And I've had a lot of dog communication work that has come through. And I certainly, you know, appreciated the time in connecting with the animals and particularly the horses. What they taught me, I feel, is um, complete and integrated for me now. It's almost like they had to teach me in order to kind of send me along my path. Um, so I really feel called to move more directly into astrology services and card readings. So that's what is offered at the Blue Sky Shop. And the whole meaning behind that is that I want to offer all of us, and I'm in this just as much as you, to see the blue sky even when it is filled with clouds and meaning confusion and lack of clarity. The blue sky is always there. It's somewhere behind those clouds. So my services, I'm always pointed in that direction. Is there a way to reframe something that you're looking at? Is there a different story that you could take on? Because really this life is about our storytelling. It's how we get through our lives here on earth. And might there be a different frame or like set of spectacles to put on in order to see that situation perhaps a little differently? And most of all, the Blue Sky Shop is meant to celebrate the uniqueness of who you are. And in particular, this is why I love astrology, because your chart, your birth chart, is very specific and very unique. And there is symbology embedded in there, not only with where the planets are placed within your chart, but also the Sabian symbol there's actually two symbols related to every point in your chart, both a seed symbol as well as a blossoming symbol, kind of what you're coming into. There is momentum built into the chart. And you chose, my firm belief is you chose all of that upon your incarnation in this lifetime. So the chart can tell us a lot and we can delve into little bits and pieces. We don't have to do all of it at once. And... Um, so that's what I offer at the Blue Sky Shop, is kind of understanding your unique aspects. And I am your biggest cheerleader <laughs> in terms of wanting you to move towards those aspects of yourself and to invite in as much uniqueness as you can into how you shine out in this world. Because in the age of Aquarius, we need as much uniqueness as possible, as many options and we're getting into a place of greater freedom and greater compassion for one another. And the blue sky offers room for everybody and then some. Some people might choose to have a really big sphere um, in which they own their presence. And others might be really crowded in with a bunch of others and that feels right to them. It's all good. And to know that just as the earth turns around and our blue sky changes to night and back to blue sky again, it still remains. It's always blue sky. There is always room enough for all, and we can change in the process. So who you were even, you know, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, even yesterday, it's okay if that change comes forward, and that's what I'm wanting to promote in my work, okay? So this week for our reading, I, I try to put these free readings up weekly, um, I really felt called to dig into the planets a little bit more rather than a card reading. So what those of you who follow me on Facebook or in the images that you saw at the beginning of this video if you're on YouTube, 
I really felt called to offer three planets for you to choose from. And maybe more than one really hits the mark for you, like draws your eye in. This is the week of the full moon in Taurus. And that will be happening on October 24th um, at, let's see, did I write it down? I think it was 12.35 p.m. on the day um, of the 24th. So this, the full moon, again, is always a culmination point. It is an emotional and a spiritual intelligence that comes up in us that it's just a truth from within that is revealed. And then we are forever changed. And this always happens with the moon cycle. So right after the full moon, we'll go into another cycle with the new moon. And we're working on kind of a seed idea, a seed topic in a particular area of our life. That's what astrology can help to point out. And then we're building through it as we go through the moon cycle. And more and more, I've, I'm going to start working this into my readings. So with this full moon in Taurus, Taurus is a sign of beauty and is a sign of stability. Taurus loves beautiful things, loves like nature and creativity and color, but Taurus also really appreciates stability and actually can get kind of um, hamstrung with needing stability and security. And so I'm wanting to direct us more in that direction of the creativity and the beauty. And so those of you who saw my video last week, it was really hard hitting. It was Venus, who is in her retrograde season right now. Um, she was speaking up about what do you love? What do you want? What matters to you most? And that's really going to now culminate because the sign of Taurus is ruled by Venus. So there is a natural tie-in with that, okay? Um, so that's one piece of this. And also on October 23rd, uh, the sun will be entering Scorpio. So we have very intense Scorpio energy. Venus in her retrograde is, has, is in Scorpio, and we have the Sun in Scorpio, and we also have Mercury in Scorpio this week. Scorpio is the deepest that it goes. It is the very depth of the ocean, and it seeks truth, and it seeks integrity, and there is very deep passion involved with Scorpio. And they, that energy within all of us tells it like it is. That's why last week was so powerful in wanting you to get your head around what matters to you and understand that that might have changed since the last time that you really thought about what really matters in my life or in, if you're experiencing disruption, chaos of any kind, or lack of clarity in an area of life. This is Venus poking you, saying, hey, you gotta, it's time for something different here. What's it going to be? And that you get to choose. It isn't like your spiritual team or your higher self, whatever you want to call it, God, has some specific plan in place for you. It's all about experience, and believe it or not, it's about joy here in this life and finding a sense of grace and not letting fear and anxiety overtake you. It is a grand challenge here on this planet. So there's no one specific path for you. So opening up to all of the possibilities that may be and noticing where is my attention drawn to because that's a very strong indicator. We can use our thoughts and our emotions to help us determine, ah, this feels really negative when I'm over here and this isn't feeling right. And when I, when I think about this and when I turn my, my attention towards this, I feel more full. I feel more alive. That feels like truth to me. That's what all this Scorpio energy is going to bring. And this full moon in Taurus is the stability that we need with this much down deep of Scorpio those of you who have been listening to me for a while, you know, or you've gotten one of my services. When I talk about Scorpio, I talk about the auger. 
And lately, um, this has been coming up for client readings um, just this week, that I'm seeing it more, and I was, I used to see it as like what a nice fisherman uses. And now it's feeling more like a well drilling kind of a imagery. Um, that you have to break through all of anything that is is blocking your pathway, that is um, sediment that has been built up over time. I just want you to think about that imagery of well drilling, and even the this concept of hydrofracking. I mean, that's literally like explosive activity in order to make things happen, and that sometimes that is necessary. Sometimes, I mean, we had to do it with our property. We have a lot of water where we live, but there was too much sediment. There was too much rock in places, and it simply had to be done for us to get what we needed. And sometimes that explosive activity is necessary. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you here. I'm gonna keep it real because Scorpio demands that I do so. We've got powerful. Uranus activity that is explosive, that is change, that is, you know, just outward bound freedom. We've got very strong Pluto, and then we've got Venus. And guess what? Those are your three planets that we're going to be covering in this reading, depending on which ones that you chose. So just getting back here to the full moon, we're working with Sabian symbols. And again, I really like to work with both the seed as well as the blossoming. What is this full moon calling us towards? So the seed energy is Taurus 1. Seed energy is what you have within you. So the full moon is calling this up within you. You got this. There is a level of this symbol that you know how to use for yourself and it's being called forward with the full moon. You've got it. It's inner mastery. So use that in service to the blossoming symbol. This is the invitation. This is what we're called forward because we're always in a, in a state of evolving and expanding here on earth. That's what we do. Our curious nature, it's just the way it goes. So your seed energy is very lovely. Taurus one, a clear mountain stream. This week, there is going to be a lot of big energies playing out, really deep down stuff, really getting to your truth, to your integrity, maybe having some emotions come to the surface. Maybe people, including yourself, are a little spiky, are wanting the truth, are bleh, blurting it out, and everybody's like, whoa, okay. And there is, as I said, the Uranus, the Pluto, the Venus, all of this is very passionate energy and it's all about change and evolution. We're on the cusp of this brand new sort of chapter coming forward with this full moon. But it's for your stability. It's in Taurus. This is to offer a more beautiful day for you. This is to offer greater stability. But as we know, you know, you go through the turbulence and then you hit this beautiful streamlined energy. We're in that final kind of descent through that. And again, keep thinking about the well drilling keeps coming up for me. You're just going down through the last of the sediment in something in order to break into something that's more nourishing for you. That's the whole meaning. So the, the call, the seed energy, We've all got this. There is a clear mountain stream. There is peace available if you will just take a minute to get centered. So please, if you experience upset this week, think about that symbology, a clear mountain stream. And that also points to how energy works, that you can allow the stream of energy, the stream of well-being, to help flow through your life and flow you into what is next. And it really um, think about your actions that you take this week and, and be discerning about it because it's big energy playing out, okay? And full moon is always a time when everybody's all out. 
There's no more thinking about it. There's no more, eh, I can't really say that or I can't really do that. This is a mm, no holds barred. But I do feel like there is some, I don't really want to use this word, but it's what's coming up. There's a level of control and like calmness that Taurus offers. So it's all good. This is a nice cosmic balancing here. But always remember the clear mountain stream that's available to you. But what is the full moon reaching you towards? What is the blossoming? What is the becoming? And that's Taurus too. An electrical storm. That is purely, uh, it is everything that Venus retrograde is about. It is everything that Uranus retrograde, which is going on right now, uh, is about. And all of that is within. The electrical storm is within you. And this is change, much, much needed change. It is like when I actually saw this on the way to work one day last week, a transformer blowing. And I didn't see the transformer until I got up a little bit further on the roadway. There was these mighty blue, it was gorgeous actually, blue and yellow and, and orange and it was just magnificent. And everything stops for a minute. The power just goes down, powering it down so that you can power it up the way you want to with what matters to you most. That is really what this full moon is offering. So yeah, <laughs> it's a big week and it might be kind of a blow up of some things. Don't take that negatively though. Watch where your mind is going as I say that. Things blowing up is not always bad. What if it blows up in a good direction like people actually see? Wow, she really has skill in this area. Let's, let's give her that position or let's give her that project and let her run with it because she's got the passion behind it and she's showing that. It's whatever your version of beauty and what matters to you most, your passion. If you embody that within yourself, watch the world around you change. Watch everything just come to you because you exude, you know that you know that topic or you feel that feeling or you know that a relationship is in this state. Blowing up the electrical storm is not always a bad thing. But boy, we as humans, we don't really look forward to it because it creates whether you want to see it as turbulence on an airplane or whether you want to see it like you're drilling a well and you come to those places and you've got to make the decision, okay, we're going to do this hydrofracking and we have to do it or we're not going to get what we need for our nourishment, for the waters that we need for our life. Emotional stability here. Intuitive direction. Spiritual connection. That it's that big. So don't, you know, don't automatically go to the negative. Understand that sometimes the expansion brings so much more to you when you embody what you really care about. Kind of the sad or, or negative parts of that can be when we have to let go of something. And that's why I gave the little intro about me switching my business. It actually, like, brought tears to my eyes to think about not working with horses anymore because I adore them and I have a connection to them. But it just simply has to be because this is where my passion is taking me. Change is taking me here because it matters to me. It matters to me to uplift people if they want that. It matters to me that we all see blue sky days even when the storms come into town. So just keep that in mind as you're moving through your week and listening to your messages here. All right, so the first um, planet up in the reading uh, is Venus, is the orange planet that was at the top of the graphic shown in the video and on Facebook. Venus, as I said, is in her retrograde motion right now, and what she is saying 
She's tucked up at the time of this full moon with the sun. They're essentially holding hands. This is directly across the sky from Uranus, who is holding hands with the moon. So that's where the big upset is going to happen, is sort of this change, sudden change in direction with, you know, these deepest emotional stability within you, your intuition giving you guidance. And Venus is with the sun, which is our outward expression, okay? It's how we bring ourselves to life. To life. And for each of you, this is going to be in a different part of your chart. But Venus, again, in retrograde, I never look at retrogrades as negative, ever. Because it is a chance for you to dig down deep. She's here in Scorpio. The sun will have just moved into Scorpio, so that amplifies the energy of that sign. When the sun first moves into a new zodiac sign, it's like kabam! It's like something being shot out of a cannon. There is tons of momentum. And again, your astrology, the planets, always serve you. What if you took that belief on? All of this serves you. So Venus is just digging down deep and with the sun bringing to life whatever matters most to you. What are you passionate about? That's what Venus is wanting to bring forward. And this is from your very depths. It is at where the well drilling has come to. This is where the auger ends. It is, you've done the hydrofracking, it's all good. You've gotten to the sustenance. What is it going to be? And the sun is what helps bring it to life. So you're actually allowing seeds to grow. So here is your seed energy for your Venus that you picked. This is energy through the symbol that you have within you. Use this this week, especially in tandem with the full moon symbols I gave you. Use this and know you've got it. Your Venus is calling to you this week. It is Scorpio 4. A youth carries a lighted candle in a devotional ritual. And I'm going to tie this to the seed energy of the full moon, a clear mountain stream. They are directly tied together, even though the moon is across the sky from Venus and the sun. You have a rare moment here of dramatic synergy based on what you love and what matters to you at the deepest levels of who you are, what you're passionate about, with a, a deeper level of emotional and intuitive stability. You can trust the messages that are coming up from within you. You can trust the pull that is there. That is the power of the moon. And it brings greater stability because the moon is in Taurus. Okay? So these two symbols together, this youth carrying the candle, this is like the mountain stream. There is a state of grace that is always available. You must look to that this week. Around whatever it is that is, you are redefining what you care about, what is most passionate to you. And this is in any area of life, or it could be all areas of life. Again, your chart speaks to, you would see right where this is in terms of the house in your astrology. But you really are able to come forward to bring what Venus is showing. You're able to bring that forward. And it is scary to be there. It is scary for me to step out from behind horses and to offer these, these offerings solely in a whole different way, in a whole new frame with the Blue Sky Shop, for instance. So there is this vulnerability there that I feel, and that's why I keep getting pointed back to the Clear Mountain Stream and the youth carrying the candle. Think about that devotional ritual. It is something you can count on. You can count on that your spirit and your inner passion is there to guide you. You can believe in it, whatever that is for you. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you feel some kind of a rumbling there. There's something there that is pulling you towards what, what do I really love? 
What am I passionate about? What does beauty look like through my eyes? And this is deeply held within you. And it's ready to come forward. But just have some grace about it and peace about it. And don't let the vulnerability, the fear, the anxiety take you over. That's the seed symbols for you. It's, it's all, it's a sense of grace and peace that all is well and you are simply being led just like that small child. It's your inner child coming up here and saying it's all right. We're just stepping forward. We're going towards what we want. But then the, the, the draw, the pull of this full moon, which is across the sky from your Venus, I mean, and I love oppositions, and I don't call them that in astrology. I call them alignments because I see them as this very dramatic energy that's like a superpower. You are the magnet in the middle that draws the energy of both together. Talk about power pact. That's how we always have this at a full moon. The sun stands across the sky from the moon. But in this case, we have Venus with the sun standing across the sky with Uranus with the moon. So what is that moon-Uranus combination drawing you towards? That is Scorpio 5. A massive rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea. And this is combined with an electrical storm. So here we clearly have change. And it is change of very solid structures. And, and I'm getting the sense of family here, big time. There are structures in your life that will always be there for you no matter what changes you make. And if they aren't, then you know that those changes are meant to happen. That those aspects are meant to float away. But there are certain underpinnings within your existence, within your life, that are so solid that they will remain. And you can trust that. That's what I really get. Even though storms pass through, the sea continues to pound against the rocky shore. There are foundational aspects of you personally and people within your life and structures within your life that will remain. And again, I want to say, if you see them being chopped off, the sea comes in and it goes kabam, and the electrical storm comes down and kabam, there goes the lightning, and it breaks off a huge piece of this massive rocky shore. And perhaps that's a person in your life, perhaps that's a job, Perhaps that's a pet. Whatever it may be, it's because that is ready to be released. Because it's holding you back. It's holding back the energy of your expansion. And so I, again, I want to alert you to not feel anxiety about this full moon. I want you to feel on fire about this full moon. Because as you look at that picture of Venus that I put up, she's a fiery one. It's because she's driven by passion. And here she is in Scorpio, what I consider to be one of the most passionate, but it's an intuitive passion. It's an emotional passion. And it's very, very deep. And it's really, there is a connection to that inner child part of you. Okay, so know that there is big sea of change but it's, it's calling you forward to be reshaped in some way, a way that you're ready for. Okay. The second picture in, that I proposed to you was Uranus. It's a light blue planet that's in the middle strip of the graphic I put up. So Uranus is in retrograde position also, as is Venus, and Uranus is holding hands with the moon in this configuration when we look at the full moon, okay? Across the sky is the sun standing with Venus retrograde. So they're pretty powerful together, and there's a lot of deep, deep digging that we're doing with two massive planets 
in retrograde with the two big energy movers. The sun is your masculine get her done energy and the moon is that inner inspiration and inner drive and inner nurturing and receptivity to all the signs and signals and um, inspiration that you feel. It's from within, so without. It's how they work together. So Uranus sitting with the moon, the seed energy, what Uranus, the planet of massive change and transformation and freedom, Think about the word freedom. Blasting out of all bounds. New day ahead. Okay? The seed energy from Uranus for you. What, want, what the planet wants you to understand and to know you've got this. To call upon it with this full moon is Aries 30. So it, it's actually moving back a sign from where Uranus really is at the time of this full moon. A duck pond and its brood. It is knowing that you are among many experiencing change and, and always when birds are indicated in the Sabians, um, this is about that wild self. It is about that spiritual side of you. Birds always call spirit to me when I work with the Sabians. So this is about understand you're not alone, okay? Whatever change is coming up, you are one of many that is experiencing this and it's a spiritual overhaul. It is, it is uh, we think about ducks and the patterns that they swim and the patterns that they fly in the sky and they're, they're very uh, sort of attached, that's all the imagery that I'm getting. Um, they're very attached to their patterns. And that's all getting kind of screwed up with Uranus being at this position. Uh, Aries is a very driven sign and it, it knows, it sees, it sights. Because uh, that's our symbol is in Aries. It sets its sights on something and boom, it goes. And don't even bother trying to get a, an Aries to go another way. When it gets its, its target in sight, it goes after it. And there is no shutting down that energy. But this is at the very culmination point of Aries here. And it's just calling you to realize, okay, I am part of a larger group here that is experiencing this level of change change in my very patterns of how I behave, of how I either do or don't um, welcome in my freedom, of either do I don't, do I or don't I set boundaries, um, how, how willing am I to accept change, to invite change into my life. That's what Uranus is all calling forth. And it's sort of, I just want you to know you're one of many going through this, okay? Because there's a sense here with this symbol of like, oh, I, I don't think I can do this because I need my peeps around me. And it could be this breaking away or shifting of, you know, people around you in different parts of your life or breaking away from a very close relationship it's all expansion. And just to know you're not the only one that's going through this. So then the call of the moon, which is standing right beside you at the time of this new moon, because Uranus is calling your name and saying, change baby, freedom. It's renegade energy. It's like, it's like uh, the rebel yell, you know? It's the, um, the rebel flag, you know, from from the southern part of the U.S. Like, yeah, it's it it just won't be held back. That's what I love about Uranus. It's just so wide open, and it just breaks through the boundaries. Um, so it's it's holding hands with the moon, and um, that moon, again, the the seed energy of the moon, 
is a clear mountain stream. And here you have a duck pond and its brood. So it is, there is clearly a, a insinuation of water, which is your emotional element, which is your intuitive element, okay, your inspiration. And knowing just, take a breath, know you're not alone, and know that even if part of the brood breaks away, you will find your new brood. Just keep swimming. Just, you know, there's Dory from, from Finding Nemo. It's just keep swimming and you're just gonna, you're gonna follow the stream of the, of the, of the Clear Mountain Stream. You're just gonna go and you're being led into a new territory. That's the way those seeds work together. And then the blossoming for Uranus is Taurus 1. So this is a change into a whole other sign. You're moving away from, I've got, like, it's like an order comes in. This is how I see it. This is how I do it. It's very programmed by that culmination point of Aries. That's why Aries is the one who is the leader. It gets things done like no other sign. Very driven, very focused, and, and just so much momentum that it can literally plow people over. Um, it's so strong. And so at the culmination point of that, it's like doing, ding, 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 ding. It's like a, it becomes like a machine, okay? So the blossoming here is towards Taurus. Taurus wants to take a little time. Taurus wants to look around, take in the beauty, look past anything that's had its days gone by, you know, like flowers that are wilted, it doesn't even see those. Just focuses on the beauty. And it's slow. That's why it's all on purpose that the signs are very different from one another as you move from like Aries to Taurus very much, much slower pace. Take a breath, okay? And remember, you got the mountain stream and a duck pond with its brood. It's, it's okay. You've got this and you just gotta let it flow, okay? So the blossoming of Taurus one is a clear mountain stream. <laughs> the, that is the seed energy of the full moon. And remember, the full moon is, the blossoming is towards an electrical storm. So again, I feel this sense of keep your peace about you and trust in where you're feeling led to go, even when very um, sometimes dramatic changes occur. It, it's okay. It's okay. It is leading you somewhere that is for greater beauty, that is for a whole new level of stability. And just our human nature, we can feel very vulnerable in that process. But for you, you've got to go back to a duck pond and its brood and a clear mountain stream, which is also your blossoming point. You've got a lot of good support energetically with whatever this change is for you. And it's a change having to do with greater stability and greater beauty in your life. Taurus soaks up beauty like nothing else. And there is also a sense of enhanced creativity for you um, as you envelop this change. So this is how Uranus tucked up with the moon causes these stirrings deep down in your very underpinnings of who you are. This can even be big changes in your belief system, in what you know to be true, in your own kind of integrity measures. All of those two are not meant to be static. Nothing in this life is meant to be static. Even your deepest beliefs, even what you stand on as your sense of integrity, all of that does some shifting over time because our life experience demands it. Okay, you've got a lot of very potent, well, the stream of well-being flowing to you. And don't forget, Taurus is also financial. 
It is about the matters of daily life. It's about sort of our routines of life and and how we manage our money and being really sure that what we have is going to cover tomorrow and the days ahead. It's, it's a real sense of very strong foundations being built. So it's a, the change is incredibly positive towards a greater sense of well-being. Okay? All right, for the last planet, which was kind of a beige and has a little kind of, to me, it has a slightly rose-colored tint. And if you look carefully at the photo, there is an outline of a heart the upper part of a heart. And you have Pluto as your planet. And I just think it's so ironic that Pluto has a heart because um, Pluto is aligned. It, it rules the sign of Scorpio. So you have like triple whammy energy <laughs> for this reading. And I just love it because Pluto has your heart in mind at all times. But Pluto is the planet that is the smallest and actually for a period was like totally denounced and like shoved out of the solar system. And really, um, Pluto is my favorite planet because it promotes death and rebirth. It is the phoenix. It is completely ending old chapters and starting new ones. So it is Uranus times 100. You know, Uranus promotes the change and that rebel yell within you. It's that inner child that's just like, yes! And like, let's go. And we're going to have our say and be our unique selves and it's all going to be good. And we're doing it, you know, in, in service to greater uh, expansion. And, you know, Uranus is just all about that. But Pluto is, it, it just, it's like, you're forever changed. I had Pluto crossing the, my IC, the very bottom of my chart, at the time I was diagnosed with cancer. I, you never look at life the same after you have certain Pluto transits. It promotes a, a whole rebirth of who you are. And this too is necessary in a human life. Again, nothing is meant to be static. And if something remains static, what happens is sort of lethargy sets in and a sense of um, kind of uh, infection and just deterioration sets in. There's no movement and everything is meant to be movement. We live on a planet that rotates. Everything rotates, cycles, cycles, cycles. And so Pluto is the grand driver of those big, massive, important cycles. All right, so with all that said, I just love that Pluto has this heart shape actually on the picture. That's a real deal picture of the planet because Pluto always has your greatest love, your heart, your, your passion on its mind, and it wants to take you there. But we get really fixated with our egos in terms of like chinking up the ladder when it comes to our corporate careers or going after that perfect relationship or, you know, shoving away our family or um, becoming too intertwined in family. Like when, when we get off balance in certain areas of life, either driving too hard or being too introverted it, Pluto is the grand balancer because it just like is like pfft. it takes away all of that and you're like okay time to get real and that's the energy of Scorpio too that's why Scorpio kind of gets a bad rap in my opinion because Scorpio wants to keep it real and we all have those parts of us you don't have to have you don't have to have any planet in Scorpio you still have Scorpio in your chart and it's indicated by which house it's in, which part of your life. This is, wherever that is, you like getting real, man. And I want to bring up for you, too, because Jupiter has been making a transit over the past year through Scorpio. And at the beginning of November, it's going to shift and go into Sagittarius. 
So think about the new expansion that you've experienced since November of last year. What new ways of, of feeling and believing, what new truth is there that you have come to realize? because you need to now use that going forward from November, early November onward for the whole next year. Sag is going to be a time of moving forward and for some reason that energy wants to come up for you because this Pluto energy is like it's a whole new day baby. It's like everything's just shuts down and you have to literally start from ground zero again but it's so refreshing. And this is what I've said to some of my clients who have gone through bankruptcy, for instance. I, I've said to them, just as I've said about cancer, people diagnosed with cancer are some of the luckiest people on the planet because you just get a whole new view of life. It is like starting from a blank page. And you get to build in the way that really feels best to you that is in fitting with your new set of beliefs and you're somewhat forced into creating a new set of beliefs because you don't want to be that old person anymore. You don't want to be the person that generated the cancer to begin with or that generated the debt problems to begin with. This is where something as drastic as that just sets a whole new leveling. It's like vroom! I'm starting down here and I'm going to build up in a whole new way. It is such a blessing. Such a blessing. All right, so your seed energy for Pluto at the time of this full moon. The seed energy, I want you to know, is what you got to call on. You got to know, I got this. I know how to do this. And for you, it's Capricorn 18. And that is the Union Jack flies from a British warship. You know how to power through this like nobody's business. Whatever this change, whatever this culmination point is, whatever this drive and desire towards more of what you want and less of what you don't, you know how to do that. You know how to, what I'm getting a sense of is actually this man putting on these very tall um, boots and, and just going out the door and trudging through snow and getting things cleared. You know how to do that. That's what Pluto is saying to you with this full moon. Call on that. And in combination, the alchemy point for you is with that seed energy of the full moon, which is a clear mountain stream. Know that good things are always coming to you. And this is a very different way to look at the warship the warship maybe promotes a sense of peace because you are steady as a warship. Think about the steel and just the stability that a warship has and maybe change the story a little bit. This is where reframing can help. A warship doesn't always have to have cannons and guns on it. It can simply be a presence. And the warship doesn't move fast. It ambles along steadily through the waters. And it clearly puts up there with the Union Jack. This is the part of the tribe that I believe in. This is the tribe that I'm a part of. And you can equate that to, this is how I, this is what I believe in. This is who I am. And you just keep walking along. You've got your boots on or you're that warship with however many thousands of tons of steel and you're just dun, 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 dun. you're just motoring along you know how to do that okay and to know it's a clear mountain stream in addition to this the the mountain stream is there for you you are moving towards where you're feeling called to move that invites rebirth, a new chapter for you. Okay, so when you feel angst, worship, Union Jack, flying high, bright colors, nobody can mistake you. You're moving along, you're being who you are. 
So then the call is the blossoming symbol. And this for you is uh, Capricorn 19, a five-year-old child carrying a bag filled with groceries. This is really about allowing that inner child to take center stage. I, I love pointing people towards, I want you to think about the five-year-old version of you. So this is about the time that we're enter, we're in kindergarten at this age. Think about that part of you. For most of us, we bounced out of bed and we couldn't wait to create our day. We couldn't wait to play make-believe or to get working with our, you know, tinker toys or little people or G.I. Joes or there was a creation aspect. Always when ages are part of the Sabian symbols and if there's reference to child or male or female, it, it points me in the direction of the energy of what's wanting to come up. So inner child and particularly that five. Now the five energy in numerology is that of the freedom loving adventurer. This ties beautifully to the Uranus energy, to, to Venus retrograde saying, what do you care about? What are you passionate about? And the sun's right up there with Venus saying, let's bring it, baby. You know, forward momentum at your deepest levels. And Scorpio, where that Venus and sun are sitting. And remember, Pluto, your planet, rules Scorpio. That's the triple dinger that you've got going on. All of this Scorpio ties right to that inner child. It is, it is a sense of truth that we had at that age where people could tell us, you're just, you're making that up. But to us, it was real. We could be the fairy princess or we could be the fireman or the policeman or the, the G.I. Joe. We could be anything we wanted to be. And there's a truth to that element. But only you will know that truth of what that is. And the five-year-old carrying a bag filled with groceries says, you bring that energy to your everyday life. Because remember, we're talking about a full moon in Taurus. Taurus is all about stability, structure, having a plan, taking the time, so the five-year-old part of you, this inner child, this inner drive and ambition, um, and especially in, uh, passion, being, you know, impassioned is the way it's coming through to me, impassioned with something. It's like it exudes, and it's very powerful when we're talking about Pluto for you. Um, and it's all about your heart's desire. Don't forget that heart that lives on Pluto permanently. This is what it's about. This is about really moving towards your heart's desire. And it might feel really dramatic. It might feel really like an ending. But I'm wanting to point you to, but it's the beginning. This is about bringing your inner child to a place where, yeah, you can, You. it's not obscene to see a five-year-old bringing in a, a large bag filled with groceries. You do have what it takes to handle this. That's what your warship symbol is about. And some readers look at this symbol with the five-year-old and they're like, oh, that's overburdened and you're carrying too much. I don't ever read the symbol that way. That's the difference in readers. I, I don't read it that way. I read it that you're allowing your inner passionate self, that, that five-year-old version, to come forward and have some fun in this life and to infuse a sense of passion and desire and drive that is about imagination, it's about creativity. It's not getting caught in the weeds. And yet still, even that part of you is able to handle the daily you know, grind, if you will, the big bag of groceries. The groceries point to nourishment. It's how you nourish yourself. Okay, and very much related to the mountain stream, the clear mountain stream of the moon. That's, that's where you know you've got that. You know that's where you're moving towards. It's about things becoming more clear and pristine and so refreshing in your life and, and doing away with the stodgy. 
and you know knowing you've got what it takes as the worship to move through something but maybe you don't want to be the worship anymore and this is also maybe you don't want to fight anymore maybe it's about dropping the fight and moving into this sense of greater creativity greater passion waking up and you got that ding in your eyes you know you just can't wait to get on with the day and see what you create because that is possible okay everybody <laughs> I know that was a different kind of a reading but I really felt called to let the planet speak this week so let's make the most of it it's going to be a really good one I'm fascinated to see how it plays out Thanks so much for tuning in and for listening to me here on Blue Sky Shop. And I will hope to see you next week. Bye-bye for now.